Hey everybody, I'm AJ and this is another episode of Straight From The Tap. So it's not very often that I get to check out brewery shortly after they opened. So obviously that's why I hurried over here to King of Prussia PA just to check out the beer and the good times being had here at Workhorse Brewing Company. From his humble entrepreneurial start selling t-shirts in the parking lot at Phillies games, Dan Hirschberg is now the CEO and co-founder of one of the largest brand new breweries I've ever visited. In their tasting room they have eight beers on tap along with locally crafted wine and cocktails. And from the tasting room, you can see into the brewery through a large window and watch the magic happen. Now while sipping on some beers, you can also get your game on with shuffleboard, cornhole, and other fun games too. In addition to their tasting room, there's also a German style beer hall and a comfortable lounge inside a cutout shipping container. Now they don't serve food here, but they do have different food trucks Thursday through Sunday, or you can even get food delivered. So I sat down with Dan to learn some more about this awesome place, which is Workhorse Brewing Company. So I am here with Dan Hirschberg, who is the co-founder and CEO of Workhorse Brewing Company. And he's just going to answer a couple of questions for us about this awesome brewery. And then we're going to get to uh, taste testing a couple of beers. So Dan, thanks for sitting down with me. My pleasure. Thanks for coming to drink some beers with me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So now, when did you guys actually open? So we opened our doors uh, September 14th. Okay. So it's been a three and a half year process building out this brewery nice. and coming up from idea to, to doors opening. But yeah, September 14th was a grand opening. Cool. So now uh, you guys have a ton of space. We do. How much space do you actually have? So we have 70,000 square feet in this brewery. Jesus. So it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely a lot of square footage from a customer facing standpoint. Okay. We have about 5,000 square feet in the front of the brewery. You and I okay. are sitting in our uh, German beer hall slash uh, private event space. Cool. So it's a flexible space. We've got garage doors uh, all around that can open and close depending on the weather. Nice. We've got our large tap room and then we have uh, about 50,000 square feet of manufacturing production space okay. with an additional probably 10 to 15,000 square feet of future expansion for wow. additional event space, additional tap rooms, that kind of thing. Okay, so now do you guys plan on like, do you guys have plans of like renting out the space to, for different we functions? We do, so stuff? we actually book the space that we're sitting in out fairly regularly. We have okay. events booked, whether it's a holiday party, a rehearsal dinner, fancy oh, cool. football draft, uh, any nice. use that you can think, we can have up to 125 people in the space. Cool. We also have uh, a separate um, kind of private bar uh, mm. addition that you can have with your event space. Our bar has 250 feet uh, of square footage available, so if nice. we close down one side to attach it to a private event, we still have plenty of service for cool. the 5,000 square feet of tap room. Oh wow, that's awesome. Now, with all this space, how much capacity do you guys have for brewing? Sure. So from a brewing side, we have a 30-barrel brew house. Okay. Um, we have six 60-barrel fermentation tanks and wow. a 60-barrel bright tank. So if we were to max out our capacity, we could do about five to 6,000 barrels a year. Currently, if we were to max out our brew house, we could brew up to 60,000 barrels a year on our current setup. So it's oh pretty substantial. Now, do you guys um, have like plans of barrel aging and stuff like that? Down the road, uh, certainly interested in doing that. Right now, our core portfolio is all about accessible, approachable craft beers. Okay. So we're trying to keep things in very traditional styles, but we have great relationships with a number of different distilleries and wineries. So we will uh, absolutely be barrel aging at some point. Awesome. In the future. Now, with all this space, do you guys have plans of like expanding operations, like canning, things along that line? Sure. So right now we are draft only. Okay. Uh, you can also purchase crawlers or growlers to go. Nice. Um, we do have plans to can. So we'd okay. likely be canning within, uh, I would say, 10 to 12 months from, nice. okay. uh, from when we open. Awesome. So this is just staring at me. We got to, let's, let's try yeah, a couple of these beers. Let's drink some beers. <laughs> so, what is this first one? We got the uh, the Vienna? This is the Vienna Lager. Okay. So uh, Nate Olawine, our brewmaster, was most recently at Devil's Backbone, um, okay. where he brewed for about five years, grew them from a brew pub into the production facility that they cool. occupied uh, on a 120 barrel Rolex system. So wow. okay. super uh, you know, experience in terms of scalable commercial mm. grade uh, beer. And the Vienna Lager that they brewed at DB was their cash cow. That was really oh, their, nice. their core beer. Definitely so we wanted had that to, more than a few times. It's a, it's a very tasty <laughs> one. So our uh, Vienna is obviously gonna be a little different than that. Mm -hmm. But um, you know the core of the nice. style remains the same. So you're going to get a nice malty beer, mm. yes. um, real smooth, easy drinking, good round kind of character to mm. it. 
Um, this is, you know, an all year round, everyday type of beer. Most definitely. Uh, really great with food as well. Could definitely just see this, you know, sitting in the parking lot, tailgating for a game kind of thing. Yeah, twist my arm on that one. <laughs> So now this next one is, uh, this is the West Coast IPA. Yeah, so this is the West Coast IPA. We actually have two IPAs um, on draft. So we okay. did, we have eight beers that we launched with, mm -hmm. um, all of which we did in 30 barrel batches. Okay. Um, so first go around, we're really excited with where the beers have gone. Nice. Um, we know that for future batches, things are only going to get better. Nice. Um, this West Coast IPA is going to be more of a traditional IPA, so you're mm -hmm. going to get that piney, resiny kind of okay. hop character right off the nice. get-go. Um, I think when we brew this beer again, we're going to go for a little bit more of a rounder finish, maybe okay. a little more malt backbone to complement the hops. Nice. I think it's a really solid IPA, but I'm mm -hmm. really excited to see where it goes in the Yeah, future. I definitely had this the last time. Mm -hmm. uh, took a crowler of it home, actually. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a very traditional West Coast style, and, and you'll notice yeah. that with all of our beers. We're not mm -hmm. trying to reinvent the wheel. We're trying to brew styles to their traditional characteristics. Gotcha. Um, so I think this beer is uh, just a good everyday IPA. Yeah, I mean, definitely good hop character, a moderate amount of bitterness, and mm -hmm. a nice, like, resinous pine on the back end. It's actually really good. Mm. Now, I've been always pronouncing this incorrectly <laughs> as had i previously. <laughs> so this is this i always call it a marzen but it's a merzen it's a merzen correct okay. so your uh, our german friends in uh in, in rolex who did the manufacturing of our facility mm -hmm. made sure that uh, i pronounce this correctly but yes <laughs> it is a merzen this is our fest beer okay uh, this was kegged last thursday so just uh just under a week ago so super nice. fresh okay um this is going to be your traditional Oktoberfest beer. So mm -hmm. they would brew this in March, um, have it in October. Um, mm. All of your beer, all this is kind of your outdoor drink all nice. day type yeah, beer. Yeah, yeah. I love this beer. Ah. Got a little bit of that mm. sweetness, good malt character. Yeah, a little, little bit little of bit spice of too. Yep. Mm. Absolutely, but not, not overwhelmingly so. Mm. Yeah, it's very, very smooth. It goes perfectly with this cooler weather. Oh yeah, I find myself crushing this beer lately. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's been my go-to, no nice. doubt. So last but not least, the Hellas. Yeah, so talking about all day drinking beers. Mm -hmm. uh, when you work in a brewery, you spend yeah. a lot of time in front of beer. Uh, uh, yeah. As much as I love a good IPA, there's only mm -hmm. so many you know, higher ABV yeah, beers exactly. I can drink and remain functional. So the Hellas, <laughs> which clocks in at 5% uh, at ABV. Oh, perfect. Uh, it's real easy drinking. Again, you'll see clear, beautiful beer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's really no hop character in this one. It's all gonna be uh, you know, malt driven. It's a traditional lager yeah. and uh, pro. Cheers, man. Clean, crisp. Mm. Yeah, it's I heard you nice. mention gateway beer earlier yeah. uh, in, in our conversation off mm -hmm. camera. And uh, what I found for a lot of folks when we bring people in here, it's all about giving them that, uh, whether they're a craft beer aficionado or someone new. Door. <laughs> and this is a great entryway for that. So when we have guests come in and say, hey, I don't drink craft beer, I like yeah. you know, Miller Lite or Bud Light. Mm -hmm. Say, great, well, let me give you a couple options. And I think gotcha. the Hellas is kind of that really yeah. nice introduction for folks. Nice. So now this is, uh, I can't remember, this is qualified as a lager or a pill? It is, it's a lager. Gotcha, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah so that's, that just gives it that ultimately smooth uh, mouthfeel and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, very clean and crisp. And, and we really try to lead with our lagers. Um, you know, there's mm. no hops to hide behind there, right? You got to yeah. show the, the technical proficiency of the exactly. brewer and the quality of the recipes and the quality of the system. And we cool. feel like we can uh, put our best foot forward with those. That's awesome. Well, Dan, you have an awesome, awesome space here. There's a lot of things to do here just between the games and just room to roam. Um, but hey, it sounds like you got a You've hit the ground running. You've still got room to move. Yes, sir. Well, appreciate <laughs> hey, you coming in. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Anytime. Cool. All right, everybody. So that is it for me here at Workhorse Brewing Company. I'd like to thank Dan and his crew for showing me around. And be sure to swing by King of Prussia and check this place out because there is no shortage of a good time here. So with that, I am going to sign off. and I'm going to say happy drinking, my friends, and cheers. I'll see you next time.